Hey everyone, this is Lisa from the Rhinestone World, and in this video I'm going to show you how to see if you can press normal glitter and rhinestones to a football jersey. I'm going to be using this replica jersey from Augusta Sportswear, and I'm going to have you all set to make this jersey just in time for kickoff. So here is my jersey that I'm going to be pressing. Now this jersey is from Augusta Sportswear. This is one of their ladies football replica jerseys. You can order it online if you have a resale account, Alpha Broder, um, and a couple other resources that you have. If you do not have a reseller account, you can purchase this on Amazon. And we did put a link to it in the description so you can buy it directly from that link. So one issue that happens with jerseys is that there are some kinds of material that vinyl will not stick to. Um, a lot of those are going to be nylon material, but they're also going to be coated. A very large culprit of this are red jerseys. Something about the red dye repels the vinyl. So to test to see if you can press onto a jersey, you want to do something called a water test. So what you do is you're going to take a little bit of water and you're going to drop it onto the jersey, just like that. Now, if the jersey is coated, the water will just stay beaded on there. It won't move at all. Now, if it's not coated, you'll see it move and you'll see it start sinking into the shirt. So if you notice, this went right through and it's, I didn't move the jersey. So if you go, you can see right here, it's even through the shirt and onto my chalkboard. So that means that this jersey is not coated and I'm all set to press onto it with my glitter vinyl. Now, if you do have a jersey that is coated, you still can press to it. You just need to use the Easy Weed Extra line. That is made for jerseys. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get set. So I am going to make my numbers. So right here, I have a 20. This is an outline that is part of a multi-deck design, so vinyl and rhinestones. And that is from our Mega Blink Pack. And I have a link to this SVG file in the description. So this is cut on our Magic Flock material. You can cut this on any cutter that you have. I cut this one specifically on my Silhouette Cameo. So I'm gonna bring in my rhinestones and I'm going to dump a bunch of rhinestones in my work area. Now the thing about rhinestones is they roll off of each other to fall into these holes. So once they fall into the holes, they're gonna fall right side up and then we'll be all set. So you're gonna do gentle, small circles and you can see that the stones are falling in. So once you get used to it, brushing and rhinestones won't take long. And if you have anywhere where a stone hasn't fallen in, you can bring a little pile and bring it over. So right here, small pile, small circles, and look, we're all set. So I'm gonna go through, do a quick brush, try to get all of these. And this is a pretty large design. These letters are gonna be 6.8 inches, well, numbers are gonna be 6.8 inches tall. So each one of these has just shy of 400 rhinestones in them. So this is a pretty large design that we're working with. So my two is pretty good. Let's go to, over to the zero. So again, small circles. Right, so the majority of my stones are brushed in. So now once you wanna clear your stones, you're gonna bring your brush flat and just move to the side. So I'm doing a gentle touch, and again, I'm holding my brush flat. Now if you go at an angle, that's how you knock a lot of stones out. So just keep your brush flat and keep going this way. And sometimes you'll have rhinestones that tend to like not wanna go like stuck in a spot. Sometimes you just have to change the direction you're brushing and they'll come right out. So you want to inspect your design, make sure there aren't rhinestones in between stones in here. And especially with these crystal ones, you can tend to get that a lot. So I have one open there. I'll come back to that. So again, just keep your brush flat. Now I can see I have a couple extra right here, so I'm gonna brush that to the side and bring this over, okay? So I have all of this set, 
and I have that one little straggler that didn't make it. So I'm gonna go over here and I have my tweezers. So I'm just gonna grab one right here with my tweezers and drop it in there. Now you can do a little pile of stones and brush it right in, but since it's just one little spot and I can see it, I'm just gonna do that. All right, so I'm all set here. Now we need to pick up our design. So I have my acrylic hot fix tape. This is made to withstand the heat of your heat press. So I'm gonna get a little section and I'm gonna cut it down. So here is my tape. Now the trick with your hot fix tape is that you need to commit when you drop it down. Because your rhinestones are just sitting there, so if you touch it with the tape, you will pick up some of the rhinestones, and then if you move it, you're gonna shift your entire design. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use something called a horseshoe. I'm gonna drop it down the middle and then quickly drop it to the sides. So that way you can make sure it grabs all of your rhinestones and it's not shifting. So now you just wanna smooth it just like you would if you were transferring vinyl. And I'm using my brush to smooth it around. So sometimes you can see the stones may have shifted a little bit the way I dropped it, but it still has the holes. So I can use my fingernail to nudge them back in place. All right, so now I'm going to lift this up. and all of the rhinestones came up with it. Now, if you see your rhinestone not come up with your pull, that's fine. Just drop your tape right back down and pick it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my tape backing right on here. This is going to keep it safe until I'm ready to press, and I'm going to go ahead and separate these numbers. So these are gonna be pressed separately. So I have my 20, and so this will be a multi-deck. So I have my HTV already cut for it, so when I apply it, it's going to be like this. Just like that. So we'll have my 20. So my heat press is turned on. I'm gonna get this all ready to press. Here is my jersey. I have it on my press now. So with this jersey, you'll see that there are holes in it. So a big question with pressing jerseys is, can I even press to it? The answer is yes, but you need to protect the inside of your garment. So that's where a pressing pillow comes into play. So I have um, our pressing pillow. This is also available on our website at therhinestoneworld.com. And this is perfect for jerseys like this. So I turned it to its side so it covers the majority of this area. And it has this seam here. So this pressing pillow is helpful for more than one reason. It helps keep my vinyl from sticking to the back of my shirt, but it also helps raise my shirt so that seam doesn't get in the way of, of my press. So I have a giant TRW cut out. This is basically going to be a TRW jersey. I cut this in the new Caesar rainbow white glitter. So I like it because it's got these iridescent parts to it. So when you're outside, it really, really sparkles. I love it. So I'm gonna find my placement. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it right here. Our logo tilts up a little bit. So we have it like this. And I'm just gonna check the collar. It looks pretty good and I'm all set to go. So you just wanna protect your garment at this. I'm going to get my protective cover sheet, which is also on our website. And I have my heat press set to 320 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring my heat press down, and I'm gonna press for 15 seconds. There's my first press. Take my cover sheet off, and there's my carrier. So here's my first part of my design. Let's take our pressing pillow out. We'll put that to the side for now. So here we go. We have this, it looks great. So now we're ready for the back side. So this is where it gets a little tricky. We are doing what's called a multi-deck design. So that means we're combining vinyl and rhinestones. So whenever you press vinyl and rhinestones together, you want to make sure that you press your heat transfer vinyl first. And the reason being is that both vinyl and rhinestones are applied using proper heat, but also pressure. So uh, while we're just going to tack it down for a couple seconds, we wanna make sure our vinyl goes down first because rhinestones are raised. So if we put our vinyl down first, it's going to get that pressure it needs. And then once we go ahead and add our rhinestones, then it's going to go ahead and get the dwell time that it needs. So we're gonna get our numbers. 
zero and two. And we're going to position it onto our shirt. So we also have to keep in mind that these are gonna have a rhinestone outline around it. So we need to make space for those. And the great part is that this jersey has all these little dots, so I can e easily use them to line up my design. It's a little trick. So we'll go right here. These are all set. I'll go ahead and turn it like that. Okay, so I have my 20 here. Let's check our sides. I think it looks pretty dang good. Let me just check up here. Cool. I'm just gonna bring it over just a little bit. All right, and now we're gonna do our cover sheet. So for this press, we're not gonna do the full 15 seconds. We're gonna press, oopsies. We're gonna press for just a couple seconds to get it to tack down. So, and also my pressure's a little bit high, so I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. So a couple seconds. Let's take our carrier off. There's one. There's two. All right, so there's our vinyl press. So now we're ready to line up our rhinestone design. Let's take this. We're gonna go ahead and position this around our rhinestones. So there's that. And now we have the zero. We'll go ahead and position this. Great. So this is very typical, especially if you have thinner shirts, you want to prevent the glue from going through the backside. So that is what our pillow is here for. So let's go over here. And now we're gonna continue our press and we're gonna do the full 15 seconds. So rhinestones are typically pressed around 335 degrees. Because we're doing rhinestones and vinyl, we're basically gonna cut the difference. So we're at 320, maybe even up to 325. So let's go ahead and do this for 15 seconds. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna lift our shirt from our pillow. So you can hear that little sticky noise. We're basically disconnecting the glue from our pressing pillow. And this is the same process you would have followed if you had a thinner shirt. So let's remove our hot fix tape. And this hot fix tape can be reused. Basically, until it stops picking up the rhinestones, you're, you can keep using it. And let's take this out of our pressing pillow. And there we have it. We have our vinyl and rhinestone jersey with a TRW on the front, so we're team TRW. And this is using our Mega Bling numbers and an Augusta ladies football replica jersey. So if you have any more questions, you can comment below or email us at info at the rhinestoneworld.com. If you like this video, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to see more videos on how to press the sports related items or even just get better at your vinyl and rhinestones, click here to view more videos. And don't forget to like and comment to let us know what you think. We're doing a giveaway on this jersey. To be entered for this jersey, all you have to do is like and comment on this video to be entered. We are going to announce our winner on Friday, August 11th, 2017. Good luck!